Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Moss Pawn and Gun. Moss Pawn and Gun, we're at Moss Pawn today. All right, we got another gun gripe episode for you. And uh, one of the interesting things that we're gonna talk about here, we were, you were thinking about this earlier, just how many guns get sold on a regular basis. Like, and this is kind of like getting into like statistics and the way that things are reported in terms of sales numbers. We aren't good at math. Yeah, we're not good at math and neither is the FBI apparently because uh, there's a lot of random statistics that get reported. Like for instance, this previous Black Friday, uh, going into Christmas here and going into, you know, I guess after Thanksgiving, the Black Friday sales, the, apparently there was enough NICS checks that sold enough guns to arm the Marine Corps. Yeah, and Nix is... Just on Friday, just one day. Nix is the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, for you guys that don't know. So Say that's that the five times fast. National Instant Criminal Background Check System. So that's the check that you have to go through when you buy a firearm and you fill out one of those 4473 forms, Right. you know, and uh, you, you get a background check and they say, okay, here, you can have your gun, and you go. Yeah. Go about your business. But the question is, just how many guns get sold every day? There, there's a lot. Of, there's a silver lining there a little bit. There's a lot more guns trading hands than people think, and uh, we're probably not going to say what people think we're going to say. No. Uh, but it, it's pretty interesting when you start looking into some of the uh, sources for where these sales come from. Yeah, you, it's funny because you see like these articles all the time, like record gun sales and all this kind of stuff, and you see these these numbers that get thrown out, like Black Friday. You know, just how large of an amount of firearms were sold on Black Friday this year. And like this is the NICS statistics from the FBI website here, and dates back to 1998. So like just for example, November of 1998. Let's see. Well, actually, it's it must have been late because it shows 21,000. There's no way that's right. Let's see. Let's go to 2000. Okay, it shows 898,598 background checks. All right, move up to 2016. And uh, we're just in December here now, so the December results aren't in, but 2.5 million, roughly. So that's a huge increase in the background checks, but the thing is, people don't realize, is background check is just one check. Okay, there's five lines on a 4473 that you can fill with firearms, plus they can add additional paper onto it with more guns with one background check. So you can purchase yep. X number of firearms with one background check. And that doesn't include people with carry permits who don't have to go through a background check yep. when they purchase a firearm. Here's a really good example. Let's say that you uh, get a hankering for a bunch of Mosin and Gants or something. Ooh. And of course, I have to use this example because I'm a Mosin whore. Yeah. But uh, say you go in, you buy a 20 rifle crate of Mosins, okay? Well, you're only doing one background check, mm -hmm. if you even do a background check, unless you have a carry permit. Now, certain no. states have certain rules and things like that. So some states and some jurisdictions obviously have different mm -hmm. ways that they handle that. But here in Georgia, if you have a carry permit, you don't have to undergo an actual background check. You still mm -hmm. fill out a 4473 and they still uh, have a disposition of the <clears> guns <throat> on the 4473 that they keep on their records. But there's no physical background check performed. Mm -hmm. And I could literally leave with 20 Mosin DeGants and nobody knows. Yep. I mean, basically. 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 The FBI does not keep track of those particular firearm sales because they're not handled through NICs. There's no reason for them to. So, you know, the number the, the number can only be an estimate. I mean, there's some people that estimate the, the number of firearms just in private hands in the United States to be anywhere between 400 and 600 some odd million. Yeah. So, I mean... That's why it's important for everybody to make sure their NRA dues are current. I mean, I, you know, I'm an <clears throat> NRA member. I know you're an NRA member. My whole family, we all join the NRA. It's very important to make sure that you're fighting for your rights on a regular basis and everything like that. And uh, that's a very instrumental part in making sure that things go in the right steps. And, and they are, you know, things are changing for the better um, with the current political stratum. Mm -hmm. Things could go very well moving mm -hmm. forward for us. And that's a very big thing. But getting back onto the subject, though, then you get into aspects like the, the so-called uh, gun show loophole, which doesn't exist. Uh, you know, the thing is, face-to-face -face transactions in most states are allowed on mm -hmm. long guns, uh, on handguns. If, if it's somebody in the state you live in and it doesn't cross over state lines, like here in Georgia, I can sell a gun face-to-face -to, -face to somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, it probably behooves you. I mean, if you're going to sell a, you know, Glock 19 or something to somebody, you probably... 
I would personally want to make sure it's somebody I know decently, yeah. but that's up to you to make that call. I mean, if you sell a gun to a guy that's shady and you think he's shady, well, then you probably shouldn't sell him a gun. No matter how bad you want to get rid of the gun or no matter how bad you need the money, <clears> you <throat> might want to think about that a little bit before you do it because yeah. ultimately firearms are traceable. They're not registered, but they are traceable. Well, we we you know, know people who have gone through like all right, so you, you buy a gun from a shop or whatever, and you kind of get tired of it or whatever, and you get rid of it, so you sell it. And then down the road, you know, you might get a call from the ATF, and they've done a trace on that gun, and they saw that you had a 4473 on it, you know, when you bought it, but you sold it to another individual, and then something else happened to it. It was stolen and maybe used in a crime or whatever the case right. is. So the, the, um, the ATF or the FBI, they'll trace it back to the original purchaser right. and then take baby steps from there trying to figure out what happened. You know, you don't have, like in Georgia, you don't have to have a, a bill of, sale, a bill of sale to sell a gun. Mm -hmm. Now, does it behoove you to have a bill of sale? Well, Sometimes. in that case, if the FBI is knocking on the door and they're asking, hey, this, uh, this gun in a Crown Royal bag with blood and brains all over it, uh, right here, uh, it's a on busy. a 4473 going out to you. Well, can you explain why this uh, gun's in a bloody Crown Royal bag? Well, then you might want to be able to have a piece of paper that says this guy's driver's license here, and there's yeah. just a copy of his carry permit. I sold it to him. It, it just well, depends I, on how strong you want to cover your, yourself there. We'll you get know? back to the gun show thing in a second, but like I've bought guns off of forums and stuff like Outdoor Trader or like um, you know some some sites like that. You know, we had a gun come in in a bloody Crown Royal bag. But <laughs> Just saying. But, you know, I, I go and you, you have a uh, face to face meeting with the people and they'll say, like, uh, you know, just I just need to see your carry permit or whatever. That, that's fine. I mean, whatever. You know, here's my carry permit. Just flash it. And it's like, hey, you know, okay, well, you're a trustworthy guy, most likely. And uh, you can get a feel for people for the most yeah, part. Yeah. But going back to the gun show thing, like, if, if there's a dealer at a gun show, it's not like just because they're. <laughs> it's not like because they're at the gun show that there's some magic bubble that you're in where you don't have to go through a background check. Right. You still have to fill out a 4473 with a dealer at a gun show. But if you're I walking mean, around, all right, gun shows are also where people meet. Yep. All right, and if I'm an individual with a rifle slung mm -hmm. over my shoulder that I brought to the gun show. Like a Swedish Jungman for $700. That I scored, exactly. And I walk over, and some, uh, another patron of the gun show walks up to mm -hmm. me and says, hey, man, uh, is that gun for sale? And I say, yes, yep. it is. And he gives me money, I give him gun. Well, then, guess what? That's not a gun show loophole. That's, That's a just private a face transaction. face-to-face -face private transaction. It is. When a firearm is disposed to you on a 4473, it is your personal property to do with whatever you wish. Mm -hmm. Now, different states have different rules. But getting back to the vein of the gripe, just how many guns are sold on a regular basis? I would say whatever the FBI reports, you might as well add 30% of that at least. Oh, God, I'd say... Probably 40 I, to 50% maybe. To be honest with you, it, I, I'd say at least 50%. Probably, might, you might want to even double it because, you know, f I'd say for every, for every 20 gun owners out there, I'd say, actually, in this room, all right, so say there's, there's 10 people in one room. I'd say two of them are probably, you know, gun nuts, and they are, like, fervent collectors and they just like firearms and some people buy a gun a month or a couple of guns a month or yeah. never mind well we won't go there okay so here's the other vein of the the whole consideration of this gun gripe is why what is that attributed to and i think the important thing to consider with uh, what that is attributed to is the fact that gun ownership has increased vastly for just the average common person, not to mention female head mm -hmm. of households that are out there. You know, there's younger people getting into guns at a younger age. The gun industry, that makes it grow. And of course, is it that people are just gun nuts and they're crazy and, oh, we're selling more guns because the world's more violent and all this stuff? No. It's just that if there's more people interested in guns, then guess what? You're going to sell more guns. Most and likely. that's what's happening. You also have to consider that a lot of folks that are, that are really, really new into guns, a lot of folks may not rush out and grab a carry permit right mm -hmm. out the gate. They may do five or 10 or 20 background checks or however many guns they buy. They might do a bunch of background checks before they decide, you know what, I've got four or five carry guns. I've got a shotgun, a rifle, this or that, a 22, a couple of target guns. You know, I'm going to go get my dang carry permit. Yep. And then after that, that data is just mm -hmm. never there again. Well, Think about how many guns that you and I have bought oh, yeah. and never done a background check on for the life. I mean, how long have you had a carry permit? Nine years? Oh, God. Dude, Ten years? Uh, no, like, I feel old now, like 13 years. Yeah. So, like, he so. and I have had carry permits for that time. That's, that's 13 years of data that... 
it's just not going to be part of the FBI statistics. It's There's probably, no way they can know that. It's probably half of that data. Maybe. Maybe. But <gasps> it's still interesting to think about. Well, and also consider that, like, suppressors are firearms. You know, I think, if I remember right, I remember reading somewhere that, like, just Silencer Co. alone produced and distributed like 65,000 suppressors last year and I don't I don't doubt it because suppressor ownership right now is probably close to a million or over a million suppressors in private hands and they transfer just like a firearm so they transfer on a 4473 and one of the things too about like NFA items National Firearms Act items like short barrel rifles short barrel shotguns suppressors any other weapons guns. machine guns stuff like that carry permit doesn't matter so you still have to actually go through the NICS system, even if you have a carry permit for those items. So, so, so. every every class three type transfer is going to reflect mm -hmm. in their data because and you have to physically you know, that's, do background. There's check. probably 150, maybe 200 thousand of those type of transfers that that get tied into that every year. So I mean, I'd I'd probably guesstimate that. I don't know the exact number, but um, you know something else too with like the whole the whole background check system and everything, and, and like the gun show thing. Everybody in the media, you, you always see people in the media who are just dispelling all this false information about gun shows and about the gun show loophole. That's how that whole term got coined. It's just some bogus news outlet or whatever throws that term out there and yep. it's like, oh, the gun show loophole, you can buy guns without a background check? Oh my God. Yeah, and then they want to act like it's just such a horrible thing. Look at how many guns are being sold. Like, man, you don't even know the half of it. But Literally. The half of it, because there's probably double that many, like you said. You I, I read an article recently, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was an interview between between two people, and um, the the reporter was was confused, but because it wasn't going their way. Like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me that you still have to go through a background check at a gun show? Well, yeah, if you buy from a legitimate dealer uh, who has you know guns on the table, they're a dealer, so they're going to do a 4473. It's like, oh well, wait a minute, that that kind of throws my whole argument out the door. What am I going to do with this interview? It well, was just like do, they, your re, do your research. It just it, to me, I got the feeling like they were dumbfounded that they were they were wrong in that. But it, it's just a lack of education on yeah. the subject matter. It definitely it just is. drives me bananas. We thought but. this would be a fun uh, gun gripe epi you know episode to to talk about and everything. And it's a really interesting uh, talking point when you consider just how many guns are being bought. But it's also, in my mind, an incredibly positive thing to know. Mm -hmm that there's more and more people being kind of converted over to the pro-gun world. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of folks that, you know, previously up until recently might not have been into guns. Mm -hmm. Now they are. You've got young people that are into guns. You've got a lot more lady shooters that are into guns now, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then you've got guys like, you know, a, a really good example, people like your brother. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, man, two or yeah. three years ago, yeah, we might be able to get your brother out to go shoot with us. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, we might be able to drag him out there and, and maybe turn his arm to go shoot. A, <laughs> oh, there's a machine gun out here. Oh, let me just, yeah, let me turn my arm to go shoot this machine gun. You know, it took something crazy to even get him to come out and shoot. Yeah. And now, you know, it's like, it's it's a commonly, He's, more commonly accepted yeah, so idea he, for people he, to be gun nuts. He bought, a, he bought a couple of handguns, you know, and he bought a Mosin. We built him an AR. And like he got that Mosin and he's like, oh, I like this. And like, okay, there's the bug. There's the surplus yep. bug right there. Yeah, he was helping. Well, what, what was happening? He was helping out with man cans a bit and <laughs> him and his wife and everything. And then uh, I gave him a Mosin for yeah. helping out. And he's like, oh, I like this. And oh, I was he, like, oh, I need a carbine now. So it was like, it was yeah, so funny. Done. He brought it over to the farm one day and we were out shooting everything. And I said, all right, this is how you clean it and everything. He said, oh, okay. Oh, I, I oiled the bore up. I took care of it, you know. I'm like, oh boy, he's, he's, he's going down the rabbit hole now. Oh, yeah. And that's good. So, more and more people are going down the mm. rabbit hole of gun ownership, and it's great. Uh, the statistics back it up, mm. which is a good thing, in my opinion. You know, anytime that gun ownership is on the increase, mm. that's awesome, and I think that's something that should should totally happen. Yeah. Um, one thing too, you know, during you know during Democratic presidencies, I mean, it's always going to be a thing. It's it's given when there's a scare of like gun bans and things like that. I mean, we saw it with Newtown. I mean, you know, Eric and Barry did a video right before the Newtown tragedy, and it was like, what guns to buy before ban? You and know? at the time, and we had no clue. No, and then it just blew up. I mean, gun, guns were non-existent. Like, you couldn't find a black rifle anywhere. Everybody was just dry. They were barren with uh, black rifles. That's right. And, you know, just with the, the other gun ban scares and things like that, and like the ammo ban scares and, and stuff like that, you know, people kind of panic by. That's and right. right now, we're going into a period of time. Uh, could be, you know, four years, could be eight years. We don't know. I mean, if things go along well and uh, you know keep people accountable, then we might have some good years for firearms ownership. But That's usually, right. you know, sales go down because there's not as much 
demand because the scare isn't there. But, you know, there's no telling what the market's going to do. I mean, there might be some really cool, innovative things that come out and just keeps that demand up. But, I agree. I think you know, that the next four years is going to be the true litmus test for, That was know, a big word. I don't even know what that means. You know, like litmus paper. Like oh, you, yeah, you test, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Like it, so it's going to be the ultimate around. test to really see if people really are gun nuts, tried and true or not. Because, I mean, if we have a period of relative calm mm -hmm. and then people continue to buy guns, and that'll let you know from a standpoint of culture mm -hmm. that gun Market culture strong. is really strong yep. and it's on the rise. And it should be on the rise. I think that people, uh, I think that we could get to a point where things will get simpler for people. People will go back to, I, I don't want to say like Saratoga wagons or anything, but people will go back to, <laughs> A little bit more common way of maybe not lifestyle, but maybe just the mindset of being prepared and being uh, accountable for their their family and friends yeah. and those around them, their communities, more personal in, safety, personal responsibility, yeah. more individualism yeah, and that whatnot, mindset, kind of self sufficiency. I believe is really going to take hold and, and flourish. Well, what I, I've said before, and you know, I've, I hear a lot of old timers saying, you know, you have to come to a certain point. Like technolo uh, technology increases and everything, and everything gets faster and moves along quicker. Well, at a certain point. Something's got to give, and it's going to trickle back down. I mean, things are going to have to slow back down a little bit. And, you know, maybe we're coming up to a point with the generations that are out there now that we're just going to kind of slow back down. Everybody's going to stop being so fast and everything and maybe, you know, get more, more people back into, like, hunting and just outdoors activities and things like that. I mean, yeah. it might be kind of a cultural revolution, if you will. I mean, there, there's no way to tell. But yeah. with, like, firearms ownership, if things like the Hearing Protection Act get put through, um, you know, there's, there's really no telling of what that's what that's going to look like, if it's going to be quick, if it's going to be a long drawn out process, but there's more chance of something like that getting passed now to take suppressors off of the NFA registry where you can just purchase them just like a, a firearm in a gun shop. You go in there, you say, hmm, I want to buy that suppressor, and you fill out a 4473 and you go, bye. So back to basics. Yep, a social renaissance. Social so renaissance. You know, and that very well could well. be the case. You know, um, the firearms ownership, I believe, is kind of the, the cornerstone of that mm -hmm. idea of that basic premise you know if if somebody's going to go hunting guess what they're going to need a gun if somebody wants to defend themselves and be responsible in their communities and be responsible for those around them, guess mm -hmm. what they need a gun to do that much better than a sharp stick that's right or a rock or whatever mm -hmm. so um you know i, I think that's a pretty uh, interesting point mm -hmm. you know uh, i think that that leaves the conversation pretty open-ended for interpretation so let us know what you think about these ideas uh, what do you think about gun uh, ownership what do you think about the increase of gun sales what do you think about, uh, you know, how much are you attributing to that by buying so many guns? I mean, are you somebody that uh, maybe a few years ago only had a few guns and now you've got a whole safe full of guns? If you're that person, we want to know. Let us know in the comments below. And uh, definitely special thanks to Moss Palm mm -hmm. for letting us come and commandeer their location for a few minutes here. And uh, I got something for Chad here. What's up? So, oh, is it, well, it's not a bloody crown roll bag. It can be bloody if Ooh, you need it. What is that? Ooh, let's see what we got here. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that right there. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that thing's light. Yeah. That's a butt stomper right there. Yeah, Check that out. Yeah, a lot to hold on to. That is a scandium framed air light. What model is this little guy? 329 PD. <laughs> it's lightweight. <laughs> Full bore 44 Magnum. All right. Well, hopefully no blood in the bottom of the bag. Got nah. It? Maybe just a little bit of, eh, a little bit of spill crown royal in there, nah, but that's no about it. Deal. Hey, uh, thanks for watching today's video. Uh, we got a lot more on the way, more gun gripes, more firearms facts, mm. uh, more five guns. I know those have been very popular. Mm. We got more meltdown videos on the way, uh, much more to come, uh, more than I can talk about in just an end spill on a video. So <sighs> make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're uh, signed up for our email list mm -hmm. so you can stay in touch with us. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. See you guys.